So this is our lecture on Lewis structures. Um, as far as Lewis structures goes, the main thing that I want you to know is how to draw them. So the point of this PowerPoint is to introduce you to drawing Lewis structures. But remember, the end goal, the objective here is to be able to draw a Lewis structure at the end. So we'll start with a new type of formula than you've seen before. It's called a structural formula. Just what it sounds like, a structural formula shows you the structure of the bond. So you use letters and symbols to show bonds, and then here's the key, and the position of the atoms. So not only are you showing double bond, triple bond, single bond, but you're also showing where those bonds are. And as a result, you get a general shape of the molecule. And the shape of the molecule can actually have a big impact on its um, properties. So we base these on Lewis dot structures. If you remember, that's where you put a uh, symbol of an element, and then you put the eight or less valence electrons surrounding it. So that's kind of where this comes from. Some key features of the structural formula. If you have a single bond, which remember is one pair or two total electrons, you show that with a single line right here and right here. If you have a double bond, which remember is two pairs or four total, you would show two lines. And of course, as you probably guessed, a triple bond would be three lines. So to draw Lewis structures, I'm going to give you the steps. But remember, I'm not going to have you write these steps down anywhere. The goal of telling you these steps is so that at the end you can actually draw the structure. So the first is you're going to predict the location of atoms. And the way you do that is you find the total number of electrons available for bonding. Remember, the only electrons in an atom that bond are the valence electrons. So what you're essentially going to do is calculate the total number of valence electrons in the atoms that you have. You determine the number of bonding pairs by dividing the number of electrons by two. This is always going to be your number. You're always going to divide the number of electrons by two. And if you can guess, the reason why you divide it by two is there's always two electrons per bond. Then you place a bonding pair between the central atom and each of the terminal atoms. And then from there, some of it's going to be common sense. What makes the most sense? What is the most logical way to arrange these atoms? Two key vocab words here. Central atom means the one in the middle. And terminal atoms mean the one on the edges. If you think about an airport, an airport terminal is kind of the branches that go off the main airport where you catch your plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the steps, and this time we're going to use the molecule CCl4. And I remember, this L should be lowercase. It's just the font that I used element in our... If we go back, the formula is CCl4. That 4, that sub is for this. So step one, you calculate the total number of electrons to be shown in the structure by adding the total number of valence electrons. So if we go back a minute, valence or electrons, remember, are the outermost, and you determine how many electrons, valence electrons, an element has by its group number. So if you look here, I have carbon. That was the first formula here. And I put in parentheses here that carbon is in 4A. And the reason I did that is it's kind of helpful for me to then determine that means it has four valence electrons. So remember, the group number equals the number of electrons, exactly equal. Chlorine is in group 7A, so a single chlorine is going to have seven valence electrons. Four tells you there are four atoms of chlorine. So because of that, one atom of chlorine has seven valence electrons, but I'm going to multiply that by four because each atom of chlorine is bringing seven. So you're going to do seven times four to give 28. Then you just add the totals, four plus 28, to give me 32 total electrons involved in bonding. That means between the one carbon and the four chlorines, you have a total of 32 electrons that are going to be bonded. Um, remember, you find the number of valence by the group number. That's the key. Step two is to calculate the probable number of bonds. So this is a little bit different. What you're going to use is this chart, and this chart will be provided for you. And what you're really going to use is the top the number of electrons used. So what we're doing in step two, you can kind of think of it like step two is predicted number of bonds. You see the word probable. If you want to go back to our words that we've done before, it would be like the number of valence electrons is the actual, how many you really have. And this step, step two, is the theoretical, how many should you have. So if you want to think of the word probable, um, what you're going to do is you're going to use the group number again 
but instead of using the group number equals the valence, the group number equals these electrons right here. So what you would say is carbon is in four, so it's probably going to use eight. See how that works? And carbon, uh, chlor sorry, carbon is in four, chlorine is in seven A, so it's probably going to use eight as well. You'll have this chart in front of you, but you can see the pattern is quite clear. It just goes two, four, six, eight for four A, and then once you get there, it just becomes all eight. So if you see here, again, I have carbon. Now, the four bonds, you don't really have to do that part. That's going to kind of be, I think it's going to be more confusing than anything. But what I looked at is carbon is in 4A column, so it usually forms four bonds, and it uses eight electrons. So that's where I got that number from right here. Four bonds, eight electrons. Boom. Chlorine, 7A, usually forms one bond, eight electrons. So I have one bond, eight electrons. I multiply both those numbers by four again, because again, there are four chlorines. So you always have to multiply by the subscript. So now I total the number of total electrons, eight for the carbon, 32 for the chlorine. 32 plus eight is gonna give you 40. So remember, this is the probable, this is the predicted, this is the theoretical. And 32 is what we calculated before. Um, 32 is the total number of valence. Think of this like the actual. So I do 40 minus 32 to get 8. And then I'm always, 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 always going to divide by 2. And the reason why I'm always going to divide that number by 2 is because there's always 2 electrons for bond, for, per bond. So what I end up getting with this math is I'm predicting that 4 bonds will form between 1 carbon and 3 chlorines. And the reason why that's going to be helpful is this is going to help you right here. It's going to help you determine whether there's something weird about the structure so it doesn't follow the rules exactly, whether there's exceptions, or it's going to tell you whether there are double or triple bonds. So what I go back a tick, the easiest way to add four chlorines with four bonds, what I do now is I'm going to start drawing the structure. You start with just the atoms. You have to show the atoms in the formula. You can't add an atom. You can't subtract an atom. So you have to show one carbon and three chlorine, uh, four chlorines. Now, we have to figure out the central, the one in the middle. Some of this, again, is just going to be logic. You're going to know, figure out that all molecules want to be even. They're all about being even. Even Stephen, we're going to call it. So it's most logical if you have four atoms in one atom to put four around one. The other way you can determine the central is it's carbon 4A. Carbon is usually the central atom. If carbon is in a compound, it's the center. Otherwise, it's the atom closest to carbon becomes the central atom. So that's why we have carbon in the center, and then I know I have to add four chlorines. This is all single bonds. So I know I don't have a double or triple because I can add four chlorines with four bonds. So that's how you're going to use that math. Now, you have a lot of electrons hanging out. We calculated 32 valence electrons. So what you have here is you have these electrons bonded. That's why we show the lines. But we have to add the other valence electrons. And the way we do that is dots. So you should be familiar with this. It should look like the dot structures that we did before. So again, if the electrons are bonded, we use a line. If they are free or unpaired, we use dots. The total should equal the total number of valence electrons you calculated at the beginning. Remember, each line is worth two, and then you would add double, double dots as you go around. Now, you're going to use the octet rule for this to figure out where the dots go. Octet rule says all atoms want eight. So, before the dots, this chlorine only had two electrons with it. Remember, this bond belongs to both. You count it for both. So what I did is, with just a line, it has two electrons, but if I add six more dots, now look how many electrons it has. Two, four, six, eight. You want everything to have eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. The carbon already has eight because it has four things bonded to it. Again, your total should equal that total number of valence electrons you calculated at the beginning. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. 26, 28, 30, 32. And it's always going to work out pretty nicely like that if you do it correctly. Sometimes you're going to have to draw a polyatomic ion. Remember, an ion has a charge. 
And remember, you make an ion by adding or subtracting electrons. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw them the same as Lewis structures, except you're going to account for that negative or positive charge. If it is negative, you're going to add electrons to the total valence. If it's positive, you're going to subtract electrons to the total valence. Not from the probable, only from the valence. Now, resonance is not something I'm going to have you draw. It's just a concept that I want you to know about. So there are times where it is possible to have one or more correct Lewis structure, especially if you have a double and single bond together. This is called resonance. So resonance is the idea that one or more structures is correct. You can put that double bond in a couple places, and it's still going to be correct. They differ only in the position of the electrons, never in the atom position. So here's an example of resonance. You see here we have an incomplete octet, but as soon as you add that double bond, it's good. But look, if you put the double bond here, here, or here, it's all correct. This is resonance. It doesn't matter where you put that double bond. More than one structure is correct. Here's showing you again. So whether the double bond is at the top, on the left, on the right, it's all correct. There's no one specific correct answer. Now, the way you would really draw this, and I'm not going to have you do this, I just really want you to know what resonance is, is you would actually draw dotted lines at each spot because you're kind of saying it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. So if you ever see this, that's what it is, but I'm not going to have you draw that. And finally, with everything we've done, there are exceptions to the octet rule. There are going to be times where you could have odd number of valence electrons. That's very uncommon. More common is you could have this expanded octet. Sometimes the central atom can have more than eight. So expanded octet is when the center, only the center, has more than eight valence electrons. Usually it has more than four bonds attached. It'll have five bonds or six bonds. It could also have dots attached to the central. Again, only the central atom will have the expanded octet. And what's going to happen is when you do that math that I explained in the beginning, there's actually going to be an instance where the math isn't going to line up, and that's going to tell you something's weird. And usually once you get that, it's going to be an expanded octet. There's one other thing called a coordinate covalent bond. That's when one atom donates a pair of electrons um, instead of being shared. We're not going to run into that. So the really only exception that you're going to see is that expanded octet, and we will practice this so you can see it um, in person.